I want to give you a little bit of uh, details about how this VRX performs compared to the SharkBite VRX. I would say this in short. Overall, they're very comparable. I'll show you some side by side. Uh, the new VRX, I think, handles um, the edge of range type of breakup better and doesn't show full screen flashes as much, although that could be the antennas. I'm not 100% sure. So I'm going to say something a little bit controversial. I don't recommend that you buy this new VRX unless you really, really need its new features. And, and I think this is pretty important, make this one available to a friend. Uh, the purpose of this coming out is to help others get into HD zero. And I think these are going to sell a lot and, and they're going to be sold out at times. And <laughs> I just don't want to see people struggling to not be able to get in and, and try out HD zero because there's no VRXs. It's, it's a great VRX um, and, and the new features are good and the, the performance is comparable. Um, just make sure, uh, make, make sure others can experience this also. I also want to say that the new VRX is definitely thicker than uh, the old SharkBite VRX. Technically it's two millimeters thicker at the thickest point but as you can see it's also um, less slanted here. And when we put the patch antennas on it's going to be even thicker. Um, it is what it is. Uh, I, I don't fly uh, to look cool. So I think it's going to be fine. Just something to point out uh, so that you're well informed. So this new VRX uses more power too. Uh, it goes from 7 watts on the SharkBite VRX to 11 watts on this one. And that means that some goggle battery uh, packs are not going to be able to provide enough current to run this. And my uh, trusty 18650 battery case is one of those uh, packs that can't power this directly and the goggle at the same time. So uh, it runs on 2S to 6S direct. Um, and rated up, rated for some spikes. I'm told up to 34 volts. So that's how I'm going to be running this. I'm going to be running a, a 3S pack or a 6S uh, flight battery pack uh, direct into my Sky Zones with a Y cable that this comes with, and direct into the uh, VRX, uh, and and not run a uh, 18650 uh, goggle battery pack. So just something to keep in mind, it does use more power. The new VRX has issues at very, very close range, getting overwhelmed by high signal. So very close range would be one to two feet on 200 milliwatt, and maybe like two to four feet or maybe six feet on uh, one watt. What it means is the receiver is too sensitive and will get overwhelmed by a very, very high signal. So I'll, be, I'll continue to test that, and I'm going to show you what that looks like right now. Here we go. So on takeoff there, you could see on the left uh, was the new HD0 VRX, and on the right was the SharkBite. And as the drone transitioned to 200 milliwatt and I took off, um, the VRX got overwhelmed a little bit. On this clip, you're also going to see, or hear rather, the audio mic recording for the onboard microphone. I think the microphone is um, adequate. It picks up a lot of fan noise, unfortunately. I did apply some um, really quick and dirty uh, noise removal to the audio in this clip just to make it a little bit more tolerable. Uh, so it's nice for taking audio notes while you're flying. Um, it's not studio grade audio at all. And get close, issue, get a few feet away, it's fine. Close, fine. So that's the, the main difference in uh, signal reception that I wanted to highlight. Um, and, and you really should know that that's, that's a, a 
significant difference between the two receivers. Practically speaking, I don't think it's a problem. I purposely flew over top of myself uh, multiple times while I was flying and in an altitude I would typically do that in and it was fine and, and I'll show that in the video here. Um, I'm also testing the 13 dB patches um, from TrueRC in this video. This is it here. So I, I know that that isn't fair. Um, apples to apples. It's just this is what I had because I don't have shark bite patches to put onto the HD0 VRX. Um, I have flown this quad in the same spot a lot. Um, and I, I can say that it was performing well, um, exceeding expectations in most cases. So I'll just let you watch the video. So we've got uh, TrueRC 13 dB patches on the new VRX. And it's still a little around the block. So far, so good. All on 200. Of course, we're going to get pretty sketchy right here, but still flyable. And get here, this should be kind of sketchy, still flyable. So, nice. Okay, let's do a little bit of ripping around the yard. Okay, go back this way. So good. Get a little bit close here. Should get some break up. Yep. Back off a little bit. We're fine. Okay. Go around the front of the house. That's that's quite good considering I'm looking the other way. Quite good. I mean, I always would like it to be better, but yeah, there's no lazy issues. Just some missing blocks. Yeah, feels good, looks good. Man, look at those colors. Fun to fly. Get kind of close to the house here and see if that makes it worse. Definitely, yeah, diagonal lines, some kind of interference. But overall, looks really good. So some final thoughts on this VRX. I did, I did miss a, a few things at the beginning. There, there is now a uh, real-time clock with a battery built into this so that the recordings that you have are all time-stamped and that makes reviewing things a lot uh, easier because <laughs> you can line it up by time. The next cool thing about this is it comes with a 150 millimeter uh, firmware update cable which is probably like twice as long as the uh, the old firmware update cable. So that was very good to see. There's a plug on the bottom for, let's see, right here, this one here. That plug there is so that you can plug in a uh, backpack solution to control the VRX from uh, your, your radio. So you can switch channels, and that's cool. But technically, you can do that on the old uh, VRX also. I did uh, pop this case open and looked inside, and I did see 
there's uh, pads to install, to, to solder and install that inside too. At least that's what it looked like. So if you want, you can keep it all integrated inside the case. Yeah, overall, this is a good VRX. It's what I'm going to be running because I, I like the new features it has. And uh, can't wait for the goggle. Oh, and about that goggle, I would not recommend waiting forever and ever for that goggle to come out before you get in, before you get into HD zero. If this is something that you think you like, and you already have some some analog goggles, definitely pick up this VRX. Um, the the goggle will be available to test in early summer for us testers, and then it's got to have a lag after that before it can go to production. That's just how these things work. Um, so, yeah, please I, don't wait. Pick up the VRX if you have goggles and this is what you're into. Um, but, yeah, the new goggle will be pretty cool.